Good afternoon, everybody. It's Mike the Bowtie Rider here. Happy Tuesday. Now, if you've watched these videos or you've paid any attention at all to me on Twitter, it should be absolutely no surprise that I play a lot of tabletop role-playing games. In fact, I am firmly convinced the tabletop RPGs are one of the most powerful and unique storytelling mediums that are out there. And my own experience, I have actually learned a great deal about writing fiction from my tabletop gaming experience. I wanted to go over six of these lessons that I've learned from my tabletop role-playing games. Let's go over these so that you can take these lessons from the gaming table to your writing desk. Let's get to it. Number one. Give your characters clear and concrete goals. In the best tabletop RPGs, the players are given very clear and concrete goals. Maybe it's break into the magic castle, steal the loot from the bad guy, or defeat the monster at the bottom of the dungeon. Those clear goals are done so that the players have something to orient on, something to focus towards, so that they can use their skills and abilities to achieve that goal. In a novel, it serves a similar function, and is in fact even more important. It's more important in a novel because your reader can't just say, all right, this is what I decide my goal will be. They are relying entirely upon you. Similarly, those goals actually give your reader a bit of context. Your reader knows whether to cheer or cry if your character fails or succeeds in their goal, respectively. So it is incredibly important. And if you're not giving the characters clear goals, your reader is just going to be lost and is not sure what they should be rooting for. They're not going to be sure what should be happening. What are the potential outcomes? What are the potential stakes? So giving your characters in your novels very clear goals, just like players in RPGs get, it's a very, very simple and very important foundation for the rest of your character's growth. Number two, obstacles and conflict raise tension. One time I was running a tabletop RPG and I was kind of running out of material. I didn't have that much prepared. So when they got to the last door that I had planned, I just gave my players a locked door. Now, here's the thing. They had a clearly defined goal. Get to the other side of the door. The obstacle was also equally apparent. It was the door. And yet, what then ensued was some of the most rewarding 30 minutes of gaming that I have ever played. Openus Maximus! Damn. Bowtie Fighter! Bowtie Druid. Go, my pet! That's when I realized how easy conflict is to add in a novel. Because it doesn't have to be an army of mooks, or a giant monster, or a big boss fight. So long as you have a clearly defined goal, and you have something between the characters and the resolution of that goal, you've got conflict. That's it. Number three, pose clear dramatic questions. Another time that I was running a role-playing game, the barbarian got into this big fight and the cleric ran up and bent down to try and heal the barbarians. She cast her magic spell and then this wave of cold magic lanced out from her fingers and damaged the barbarian instead. The reaction around the entire table was pretty uniform. What the f And that is a perfect example of a clearly defined dramatic question. Now, dramatic questions are just clearly defined questions in your reader's mind about your story. Why did that character turn to stone? Why is the best friend suddenly starting to act really weird? Why did the sky suddenly start raining blood? Incorporating dramatic questions is absolutely vital because, again, like dramatic tension and conflict, those questions are things that your readers want to know the answer to, and they're going to try and keep turning pages if those questions are sufficiently compelling. Also, tabletop RPGs are really good at teaching you ways to give awesome payoffs to the questions. You have to pose really intriguing questions for the readers, but you have to remember, make those payoffs sufficiently awesome. Number four. Characters have distinct personalities. Now, in tabletop RPGs, because every single major character is played by a distinct person, they naturally develop very distinct personalities, very distinct quirks, very distinct traits, and they have very unique goals. That's a virtue of the medium. Novels don't quite have the same ease of doing this because there's one person behind the scenes for all of it. It sounds kind of stupidly simple, but honestly, once I took a little bit of time to start trying to think about my different characters as individuals instead of just what's their function in this story, their personality started to blossom and the story just felt more real. Lesson five, character growth. 
In tabletop RPGs, characters naturally grow over the course of any extended game period. Now, some of that is game mechanics. From game mechanics perspective, characters get additional loot, additional skills, additional abilities, more hit points, all that stuff. That's not what I'm talking about here. Naturally, as players are playing this game and they get more invested in the conflict and in the characters and in the world, they start developing that character. Those characters start having growth. Maybe the character gets attacked by a troll and starts becoming absolutely terrified of trolls for the rest of the game. The lesson that I learned from this tabletop RPG growth is that I need to try and bake in my own own character growth for every single major character at the end of a story they should be different from how they were at the beginning of a story there should be some change something that has changed about their personality taking a little bit of time to think that through to see how your character is growing is an incredibly important and useful lesson one that made my stories feel much more real as my characters started changing throughout lesson number six fun Tabletop RPGs are wacky and ridiculous, and all sorts of unexpected things happen all the time that really make the table laugh. Maybe the wizard accidentally fireballs the party member. Maybe a dwarf has a particular boulder mace that he decides to deploy. In my defense, drastic times called for drastic measures. We needed to get out of the mimic. It seemed like the best idea at the time, even if it almost killed the entire party. When you're running a tabletop RPG, you're constantly trying to scan the table and see, is everyone having fun? If you look over and you see someone just playing on their phone, they're checked out. So you're constantly striving to try and engage all the players and give them something fun to do. In novels, it can sometimes be really easy to lose track of that. I spent two years working on this super serious historical fantasy novel. It was so serious, it was serious. And when I started rereading it, I started going, this, this isn't fun. If you're trying to write a novel and you're not paying attention to the reader's point of view, if you're not giving them something that's fun, something to engage them, something that is trying to get them more invested in your story, well, they're not going to just keep sitting at the table playing on their phone. They're going to put your book down and walk away. If, if you take nothing else from these lessons, just remember, do what you find as fun. If you have fun, your readers will too. Anyways, that's it. That's all I have for this week. I just wanted to go over some of these lessons. What about you? Have you learned any lessons from tabletop RPGs that you feel like sharing? Let me know down in the comments. Or feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I'm active there probably entirely too much. But feel free to hit me up and let me know. Hey everyone. So this is what happens when you discover that Premiere Pro ate about your last three minutes of footage. You rapidly refilm your sign off in slightly less than stellar garb. Anyways, be kind to yourselves. That is all I have for this week. If you like what you saw, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. I'm Mike the Bowtie Writer. I will see you all next time.